uh, Max, in your book, Goliath, uh, you document many ways that Israel has become, is becoming uh, an apartheid state. And since your book, other laws have been passed by the Knesset that's even further, uh, further this uh, apartheid nature of the Israeli state. Talk a little bit about these laws. Yeah, I mean, since Goliath came out um, and I... Well, let me just back backtrack a little bit. One of the things I aimed to do with Goliath was to get into the Knesset, Israel's parliament, and to interview the authors of these various laws. And I did it uh, in collaboration with a friend who is a really talented a dissident Israeli journalist, David Sheen, um, who happened to have a night job at Haaretz, the Israeli liberal newspaper at the time, and he basically had this Haaretz email, so I said, let's just email all these parliamentarians and ask them for interviews, and they all wanted publicity. The par part of the point of introducing these apartheid laws was to get publicity and to rise within the Israeli system because they were so popular. And so we got to interview the authors of these various laws. Mm -hmm. And um, one figure who is so forgettable and so uh, middling uh, from Avigdor Lieberman's Yisrael Betenu party introduced um, a law, a loyalty law, which um, wasn't necessarily about loyalty oaths, but would actually punish those who were seen as disloyal, namely Palestinians who um, observed Israel's quote unquote Independence Day, May 15th, as Nakba Day, because this was the day that Palestinians were ethnically cleansed uh, and removed from their homeland. And we uh, interviewed so many of these lawmakers, and they all basically said one thing in essence, which is that we are a Jewish state, and that means that Jewish identity has to be institutionalized in a way that makes it possible that, 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 that takes this concept of the Jewish and democratic state and puts the Jewish part over the democratic part, which means that those 1.5, now 1.8 million Palestinian citizens of Israel would, be, would have formal second-class citizenship. It's actually more like fourth-class citizenship. Yeah. But they were, what they were trying to do is formalize that because they considered that part of the Palestinian nation to be more dangerous than Palestinians who were warehoused in Gaza, who were held under apartheid in the West Bank under a military dictatorship, um, or who were refugees and were scattered around the world, because those Palestinians were on the inside and had the possibility of changing Israel and making it a binational democracy. Um, there's a new citizenship law that Israel's passed recently in the Knesset which actually removes Arabic as the official right. second language and formalizes the second class citizenship in a way that hasn't taken place before. And the reason that I think that law is so significant is because it helps us understand what Israel's agenda for the entire Holy Land is. Israel has the intention of annexing the West Bank that's what this law signals to us. And if Israel annexes the West Bank, then Palestinians in the West Bank could demand the right to vote and could demand the right to be part of the Israeli nation. And in that case, um, well, they could elect a Palestinian prime minister. So with this law, it basically removes that possibility and creates the pretext for annexation. Uh, without Palestinians demanding one person, one vote. That's something that um, a lot of people don't understand when they look at these laws. 